Hey all. Uh, my name is Ryan. You can call me Rai Rai. Welcome to my floss tube channel. Uh, this is floss tube number two. <laughs> Today is February 25th, 2022. And um, thank you for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about some cross-stitching, maybe some knitting, maybe some sewing. We've got some works in progress today. We've got some corrections. We've got um, maybe just one finish and also a little bit about me. Um, I First of all, I want to thank everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. I honestly had no idea that um, that many people would be watching me. <laughs> I thought maybe I'll get like 30 people, um, maybe, I don't know, 10 subscribers and probably 25 of those views would be me. <laughs> uh, anyways, I, I really want to thank you and um, for making this such a, such a great experience for me. Um, I know many floss tubers thank their viewers and, uh, and I really get it. I really get it. It's really nice to be part of uh, such a supportive community. And um, I hope that I can contribute to that community in some way, somehow. So I think maybe, I'm a little more nervous actually this time than it was the first time. I think the first time I had, I had no idea what to expect. And so I just kind of put the camera on and ran with it. And this time I'm trying to kind of take from my learnings and not say, um, <laughs> I, I had no idea. I mean, I had a vague idea that I would say I'm a lot, but this was really exceptional. I had no idea that it was literally almost every second word. So thank you for indulging me. Thank you for your patience. Let's hope this one is a little more smooth. No promises, though. I made some notes and maybe we'll get through them. Oh, um, further to viewership and watching, uh, thank you also for the comments. It's uh, It was really fun to go through them and reply to them. And I know you're there on the other side of the lens and watching me and it's a little bit of um, one-way interaction but the comments really allow us to kind of engage in a bit of a dialogue so so I want to I want to thank you and I, I read them all I try to reply to most of them um, I'll be making little notes as I go along if uh, there's anything I want to reflect upon or if you guys had any questions uh, I think a few people actually commented on the color of my walls and uh, they said they liked, they liked the purple walls. Well, they're, I mean, they're, they're not exactly purple. I think actually in the light, they might look a little purple, but what I did, I, I what I did, I dug up my DMC um, chart, my swatch book, and I found a DMC floss that kind of, matches or is close to the color of my wall. So if you if you want to see what it looks like, it's a DMC 161. And um, anyways, I, now that I'm looking at it, I mean, I, I thought it was more indigo, but I guess there's a little bit of purpley in it. Anyways, DMC 161. Uh, what, see, okay, now I moved from ums to ahs. <laughs> So let's see what, oh, corrections. Corrections from last time we talked about owl forest embroidery. I believe I misspoke and said owl street embroidery. The street was in reference to Satsuma Street, uh, which was the Biscornu that I did. And um, I made a mistake. So it is Owl Forest Embroidery. Please check them out if you haven't had a chance. Uh, they have beautiful designs. They also um, do over-dyed flosses and they have PDF charts. 
that's very easy for you to download. Um, yeah, I, I, I've got a project actually on the go with them. I'll probably show next time. And anyway, so that's Owl Forest Embroidery. Another correction that I had was Jeanette Douglas. I am doing a series, the mini bouquet series. Uh, I showed you two last week. I've got, I've got to my little, <laughs> my little uh, February mini, mini bouquet um, tea envelope here. And um, thanks for the compliments. It, it was, it was a really fun project. Totally improvisational. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't even make up a paper pattern. I, I just kind of went for it. So if we're going to do a tutorial, I might spend a little more time kind of doing a more formal thing, just, uh, just so I can work out the, the kinks and wrinkles. Anyways, Jeanette Douglas, mini bouquet. I believe, I believe I said mini Okay, but in the caption below, I said topiary, and that was a mistake. But not entirely, because I actually am working on Jeanette Douglas Mini Topiary. It's uh, it was one of the first projects I started in lockdown, and that was almost two years ago, March 2020, and um, I just happened to have it here with me. Uh, Jeanette Douglas Mini Topiary. It was, I think it was designed in conjunction with Needle Necessities and it was to showcase a lot of their overdyed flosses and uh, so I managed to find an online retailer that had most of them. Uh, so I, I bought four and the fifth one, actually the very first one, was a free download. So the shop, uh, what was it called? Um, the Silver Needle actually uh, emailed it to me and uh, I was very grateful for that. So, so I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna show you all five. This is, this is the one that I did. Uh, this is mini topiary number two. And it's a really cute size. It's got a whole bunch of fun novelty stitching, a little more than just cross. Is there even any cross stitch in here? Maybe not. Maybe every row of the sampler looks like a specialty stitch. Anyways, uh, it was done on a 28 count water lily. It's a Joblin. And this, oops, this is it. I think, can you see that okay? It's really sweet. It's um, maybe three inches by four and a half. And it uses a variety of DMCs. Like I said, this was designed for needle necessities. I think we're talking about 20, 21 years ago. And uh, so needle necessities isn't around anymore. So I believe that uh, if my notes are correct, yeah, that thread works. They, I don't know if they bought the dye recipes or were, were passed on the dye recipes from needle necessities or if needle necessities rolled into thread works. But anyways, uh, they had Threadworks equivalents, so you can see they're they're really pretty, very soft, at least uh, for these uh, for these projects. Uh, they come with beads, and this one even had did this one have a metallic? Yeah, this one this one even had a metallic. So kind of the reason I'm bringing this up here with you guys is since you liked my my little tea tote, and uh, I've been enjoying finishing these projects a lot. I don't know what to do with this. Uh, the, the suggestion, I think as you saw on the cover, it was a needle roll. Um, you can frame them. I thought maybe I could stitch them all. So see, there's a little needle roll. You can stitch them all together. 
So I, I kept it on the larger, the larger fabric. I'm uh, not sure what I would do, but I think I might like to finish them individually. So maybe I could do a sachet, like a little potpourri sachet. I could do maybe a needle book, um, some sort of little pocket thing. So if you have any suggestions on how you might like to see this finished, um, please let me know in the comments below and we'll see what I end up doing. Maybe if I get my act together, I'll, I'll have something ready for my, for my next floss too. Anyways, that is a long <laughs> segment to correct. Jeanette Douglas, mini bouquet instead of mini topiary. If you want a mini topiary, uh, have a look around. Uh, they're really cute, really sweet. They suit my attention span. <laughs> um, very compact, a lot of variety, and uh, really fun to stitch. Oh, uh, what else are we gonna talk about today? Ooh, okay, let's let's talk about this. I've got uh, I've got something I want to show you. How did I get into cross stitching or needlework? It's it's kind of actually in my blood. Um, I'm, I come from Ukrainian ancestry. Uh, my mother's Ukrainian. In fact, uh, she, she was born here in Canada, but she, she didn't speak in, uh, English until she started grade school. So yeah, very, very strong Ukrainian community, Ukrainian background. Of course, all the cooking was Ukrainian, the holubchi, the pehe, uh, the kucha, and, um, and my dad too, his mother is Ukrainian. And she actually kept in contact with a lot of her relatives, her cousins back in Western Ukraine. And they would exchange letters. It was very, very uh, heavy, heavy communist rule. And I remember my grandmother always saying that um, she had to be very careful what she wrote and what they would reply with uh, because of censorship. They thought that everything would be opened and searched through and read, uh, but that didn't stop them from writing, from corresponding, uh, from sending kind of little care packages back and forth. I believe she sent like a lot of underwear, like slips and bras and pantyhose and some basic toiletries. And they would send her things back to her and to us as well. And uh, we know Ukraine has a large tradition in embroidery and pisanka, um, which is the Ukrainian Easter egg decorating. And so I guess they heard about my grandma's first grandson, which is me. And uh, for my first birthday, they actually um, mailed me this. This is not, um, this is not the frame that it came in. But uh, it's two little kitties. Now this, I guess, technically is not cross stitch, although it's only cross stitch used. But it's done on a very fine weave. It's just a plain weave, and um, um, <laughs> and it's really sweet. So on the back, they wrote, or I think my grandmother wrote this this picture and shirt. So they gave me a shirt with an embroidered collar and cuffs. Um, this picture and shirt was given to Ryan for his first birthday from his great grandmother's nephew's daughter, Western Ukraine, Europe, um, on the occasion of my first birthday. So I'm actually kind of impressed that I still have it, that it's still kicking around. And, and I'm really happy that I that I did hang on to it. And it kind of inspired me to explore Ukrainian embroidery. And um, like I said, coming from a design background, I was really interested in knowing uh, what was happening in Ukrainian embroidery today, if there's any sort of modern trends or innovations, any um, style updates. And actually, there, there weren't, there, there, there weren't a lot of new stuff happening. There's maybe two or three things I saw that kind of interested me, but no new charts, no patterns, no designs that uh, really kind of spoke with me, spoke to me. So I thought I would design some myself. And uh, I mean, that hasn't stopped me before. So 
so I thought though before before I started, it might be a good idea for me to get my hands wet in some some cross stitch designs and charts that are already out there, and uh, to get a flavor of what it is that I like stitching, and so what I would like to create from a design or a chart um, that that I would like to stitch. And because I didn't have a lot of experience and because I wanted something with a more of a Ukrainian flavor, I did manage actually to find to find a project. It's, uh, I believe you know this label, this designer. Uh, her, the company name is Ink Circles. And this is uh, Tracy Horner. She actually, I, I follow her on Patreon. She's um, she's one of the Patreon accounts that I follow. And, and I really enjoy her. She's very good at, um, at uh, keeping us entertained with stories and notes and updates on some of her designs. And so Ink Circles, this is one of hers. It's uh, from quite a few years old. It's uh, called Hanky Pisanky. So Pisanki, uh, Pisinka, that's the Ukrainian Easter egg um, decorating. I'm sure you might have seen it. If not, I'll, I've got some Ukrainian Easter eggs that I've done and that my family's done. So I'll I'll share them maybe if I can get another floss tube done before Easter. That might be a nice um, theme to talk about. So thank you, Pisanki. And... This, what have I got to say about this one? Oh, it was, again, um, speaking of colors and discontinued products and companies and threads, uh, I believe Tracy designed this using Carrie's thread. And um, she did two colorways. One was a pink colorway, that's, that's the one I'm doing. Uh, the other one was like a rainbow colorway, which actually is, is probably truer uh, in accuracy to what I would know Ukrainian embroidery to look like. Um, a lot reds and yellows and greens and blacks and very vivid, very lush. So I'm doing the pink colorway, but I don't have access to Carrie's threads. I, I don't think any of us does. So uh, with the help of the kind ladies at my local needle workshop, which is not so local, by the way. Um, it's Gita's and it's actually in another city. So um, not exactly easy to get to. I'm surprised, I'm in Toronto and I'm really kind of surprised in a city our size that we don't have one. So thank goodness for e-commerce, thank goodness for the internet and um, thank goodness for <laughs> our local needle workshops that we can get access to. So. They were kind enough to help me do some color matching and I settled upon a selection of uh, classic color works. We've got uh, some gentle arts, uh, we've got a week style works and uh, we've got a DMC and let me show you where I am. It's done on an eight o'clock black Ada, a 16 count. The ladies at the shop convinced me not to use linen. The model was stitched on a, on a 32 count linen. And they said, as a beginner, I may have better luck stitching on Ada cloth. And they were right. Um, yeah, I think anyone who's worked on black knows it's not always easy to see where those holes are. Uh, having, having a white sheet in behind really helps kind of bounce the light and, and reflect it back to see those holes. Anyways, here we are. Uh, like I said, I started this one a while ago and uh, I just picked it up recently. I did, where are we? Uh, this diagonal line here, oh, this way, <laughs> this diagonal line here in this little motif as well. And it, it's not, too unwieldy. It, it won't be that large. It's a it's a nice, comfortable size. And again, I like this. I like this style because each kind of motif is discrete and distinct. And um, so I can pick one section and do it and finish it and be happy. So yeah, I'm happy to to have picked this one up again. Uh, so ink circles, hinky, piercing key. Um, 
This is my Ukrainian, my Ukrainian embroidery, my Ukrainian needlework. So yeah, that's been fun. Uh, but oh, so thank you for reminding me. Thank you for reminding myself. That leads to our tip of the day. Tip of the day. Check designers' websites. Check cross stitch designers websites. Uh, Tracy of Ink Circles on her website for this design actually posted a conversion from Carrie's Threads to, I believe um, it was Gentle Arts. So this exercise of me matching or trying to match uh, the colors kind of was unnecessary. I mean, it was fine, it was a fun exercise, but she did the work for me. <laughs> and uh, she did all gentle arts. I only ended up with a few. Uh, interestingly, they were all completely different from what she matched, but that, that's okay. I guess that will be kind of what, what makes this mine. Um, so anyways, Check your designer's websites. Whenever you buy a pattern before you kick off on it, uh, they list any corrections, addendums, if there's a mistake on the chart. I know that if that happens, some designers that I've that I've whose charts I've stitched have been very good at posting um, modifications or corrections. And or questions, you know, a lot of people might have a question, especially when it comes to specialty stitches. Um, I know Chatelaine. Chatelaine has some beautiful, beautiful charts. I've, I've got two kitted up actually, and I'm looking forward to starting them. So lots of specialty stitches and a lot of questions. So there's some really good forms out there um, that, uh, that are great resources to access if you need any help with your stitching. So. Mm. Hungry. My stomach is growling. I think it's lunchtime. Anyways, uh, what else? So that was one work in progress. Another one, the one I have, we talked about this on my very first episode. It was actually a stitch along combined with a book club. So it's a stitching book club. It's called The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Uh, here's, here's the chart. I mean, there's, there's not much to see. This is, it's a mystery stitch along. It'll be released in three segments. And she released the first segment. Uh, Kristen Ashley is the name of the designer. She released the first segment at the beginning of February, and uh, I can't remember when the other two are coming out. Uh, March 5th is the second one, and March 26th will be the last one. And uh, I'm using the called for DMC. The fabric, the linen, I think she called for a, just a white uh, opal, and I didn't have anything like that, but I did want to use uh, some of the pictures, this plus linen that I that I showed off a little bit last week. And uh, I wanted to pick one of those colors and I found one that worked. So this is, this is where I am. I don't know if you can, how's that? Oh, <laughs> it's a little dark here. Um, but it's it's actually pretty accurate. The the fabric it's a really nice um, it's a really nice soft gray with some modeling going on. Um, thirty two count thirty two count picture this plus and uh, in helix the color is helix called for DMC and and I'm almost I'm almost done. I just have to these motifs here. I just need to repeat on this side and. I need to finish the actual book title and then a couple more bands and then I'll be ready for the next one. So I think what I say, Mar March 6th, that's coming out. I, I should have time to finish it, uh, I, I think. And it's a, it's a nice stitch. It actually, this linen is really beautiful. It's um, very soft and it's like really well-worn 
linen. It's not too flimsy though, like it has some structure and body, um, but it's, it's very soft and tactile. So I really, really, it's my first time working with Picture This Plus. So yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy with this. So maybe on the next floss tube we'll have a, mm, maybe not. No, I'll, I'll work some more on the ink circles uh, while I wait for the next one to come out. So that's Narnia. What else have we got? Uh, one of my favorite things that I enjoy about watching everyone's floss tubes is a section that everyone calls hall. And uh, hall, as we know, is sort of acquisition of charts and kits and linens and flosses and all those fun things related to cross-stitching. And uh, my first floss tube, I did a section, a little bit of a twist on that, it's called an unboxing. And this time, it's a little bit of an unboxing. I kind of already started opening this. Um, anyways, I thought it's, It'll be a, a fun thing to dive into. This actually is from a uh, floss dyer in the US, Almond Eminence. Almond Eminence. She, uh, her name is Ymir. She has uh, an amazing floss tube channel. Really, really interesting, entertaining videos. I think that she's probably known for her, for her tiny, tiny stitching like exceptionally small, so fine, truly unbelievable. I mean, I can't believe it. I don't know how she does it. I certainly can't do it with my version today, even with a magnifying glass. But, uh, oh, I've got, I've got a cat here and I have no idea if, uh, if he's gonna make an appearance. Anyways, maybe, maybe he will when he sees the floss. Ymir, Almond Eminems. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is Stanley. Say hi, Stanley. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you gonna lie down? Okay. <laughs> well, I guess I guess Stanley's gonna help me with this. Almond Eminem Studio. Uh, she's in the U.S. And um, I ordered a little, a little package. I think she called it, yeah, a Silk Explorer pack. And now we know everyone loves red. Samplers, red, go hand in hand without a doubt. And I don't have a red sampler on the go. Apparently you're, you're always supposed to have a red sampler on the go. I don't. So I thought by treating myself to this little Explorer pack, might kind of give me some ideas on what I can stitch with and, and what I can actually stitch. So this Explorer pack includes um, five, five, Stanley. <laughs> okay, he's literally lying down right here on my desk, on my laptop. Okay, you know what, just, just settle down, okay? <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, five silks. Let's have a look. Oh, the first one uh, that came in the Explorer pack. <laughs> Want to smell it? <laughs> is, uh, what is this? Oh, it's a one ply and three and fire. And honestly, I've never seen yarn or yarn floss that was so fine uh, the color it's almost like um like a hot pink a coral flamingo really pretty and it's the first time i've had a floss on a spool like this so i don't know what i'm going to stitch with this i think i might have to double it up okay stanley you're hogging the limelight mm. i'm gonna have to put you down okay <laughs> Or you can, you can sit there if you want. Sorry about that, guys. So we've, we've got this little spool. We've got, what else? I've got so many envelopes here. We've got, oh, two, two little kind of mini skeins. This is called Brick. And uh, Brick, what is Brick? Oh, it's a six ply. 
two skeins of six ply, again, very fine. Okay, skin, you're gonna have to move. <laughs> Okay, maybe maybe I'll I'll just I'll just keep up with this. <laughs> Stanley. Well, he's settled in. Let's see how far I get. Two two skeins, too many skeins of this is 12 ply silk in a color rose. Uh, this is again, these are so so fine. I, I have no idea what I can stitch with it. Uh, I certainly one ply. I mean, this is finer than the linen that I'd be stitching it on. So ideas welcome. <laughs> and I've got one last one. Oh, so here, here's an unboxing. A true unboxing. Let's dig into this. This is scarlet and it's a two ply. Oh, oh, and there's two spools. Oh, cute. There's one, there's the other. This is, yeah, this is definitely thicker than the one ply, but this, this I think might be equivalent to, I would say mm, maybe one pulled strand of DMC maybe one and a half, one and a half strands of, uh, of DMC might be a um, good comparison. And uh, this, this is a softer color, muted, um, no real variegation in here, but uh, we can see in the bricks, I can, I want to unwrap them. Uh, we can see there's some beautiful shading going on in there. So well, that's my only them purchase. Very happy with that. And Stan, I'm gonna, are you gonna lie down? Here, come on. It's a little bit crazy. Well, let's let's continue. Uh, another another little piece of haul I got was a needle book. Actually, this is this is my first needle, and here I am picking fur off. Now you know why. This is the first needle book book needle book purchase that I've made, and I was curious to see how how it's constructed. Maybe get some ideas for making my own, and. It's called Crying Kim. <laughs> Crying Kim. And it's got elastic, a very simple, very easy construction, but absolutely, this is just what I'm looking for. Uh, there's a little pocket here for my saju needles, and there's a pocket here where my scissors fell out. I can put my scissors in there. And what I liked about this is that the little felt fold in the middle, I think you're supposed to use it for pins or needles, but uh, so the Narnia is kind of my first project where it involves a lot of color changing and going back and forth. And so you kind of are left with all of these just different little bits and bobs and strands that are kind of too long to throw out, but too short to wind back on, on your skein. So I, I like this concept. It's kind of a, a place to park my thread until I need them again. So, oh, where did I get it? I got it from, I've got the tag on here still. I got it from Box of Oddities. <laughs> Box of Oddities. I don't know if you get uh, see that. I'll put the in the drop down box below. I'll, I'll put the information. Um, they're they're based in in Ontario, so I like supporting local businesses, uh, e even through e commerce and on the internet. Uh, mostly because shipping shipping is a fortune when you're ordering stuff from from the UK from the US. It takes forever and 
here. Yeah, I like I like supporting more local businesses. I've also never seen a fabric like this. So it's a fun treat. What else do we have? Oh, I, I don't have a lot of finishes. I've got one though that I want to share and I saved this for the end because it is knitting related. It's knitting related. So all you cross stitchers, I know there's a lot of overlap in crafting and needle arts, but uh, if you don't want knitting, you can tune out now. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> Anyways, knitting. One thing you need to know about me, I lose umbrellas. I lose scarves. I lose umbrellas. I lose gloves and mittens. I lose umbrellas. I lose sunglasses like crazy. It's like they just kind of fly out of my hands. I, I have no control over it. I don't know why. Anyways, my, it's been a very cold winter here and my mom knit me a really lovely pair. She's a knitter. She's a big knitter, big crafter. It's where I got a lot of, uh, I guess, um, a lot of my motivation or inspiration from. And anyway, she's a big knitter and she had some Icelandic wool. She knit me a pair of gloves. I was really afraid to wear them because I didn't want to lose them. So these are the gloves. And I knit an eye cord. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you are familiar with these uh, growing up. In colder climates, when you're young, again, like me, you kind of lose your mittens or misplace them. And so this cord actually goes down uh, through one sleeve, across the back, out the other. And so when you take your mittens off, uh, they're not going to go very far. <laughs> so, yeah, this was actually really fun. It just took me an evening. I had some leftover yarn from from another local yarn dyer of Knitting Wolf, Knitting Wolf Luxury Yarns. And I don't think that he is dying anymore, at least at this time. But this was, a, this was some nice yarn that I really enjoyed knitting up. And yeah, I turned it into an I-cord. When I told my mom about it, she said, oh, <laughs> you, you made some idiot string. And I'm like, no, 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 we're not calling it idiot string. Uh, we're calling it um, mitten cord. <laughs> it's a mitten cord. You don't need to be an idiot to lose your mittens. I'm sorry. Kind of, um, well, she calls it the way it is. She's very pragmatic. I'm sure you'll be hearing a lot about her in future videos if you manage to stay tuned in. <laughs> so anyways, this, this was kind of a quick and easy finish for me. Practical, again, I'm, I'm all about the practical. I'm about uh, being resourceful, using up my old bits and bobs, and practical. I don't want to lose these. They're very soft, very soft, very comfortable, and very necessary. This has been an exceptionally cold winter and like really I'm from Manitoba and in Toronto I, I don't ever remember a winter being this cold so they help us keep warm and I think I think that's it guys I think that's it what can I say my cat paid us a little visit and I've got a dog too I don't know maybe you might hear her at some point. Uh, she's outside right now having uh, fun being walked. Um, she'll be back in a bit. You might see her in a future video. Definitely see more of Stanley in a future video. Uh, you'll see more knitting. You'll see more haul. You'll see hopefully a little more finishes, a little more work in progress. I, I tend to be more of a serial, serial stitcher. Is that right? A monogamous stitcher in that I, I don't like having a lot of projects on the go. Uh, it kind of triggers anxiety for me. <laughs> um, I'm not sure why. Well, I think I do know why, but we're not going to get into that now. 
So I don't like having a lot of projects on the go. And I think the, the number of projects I have on the go now is really a comfortable size. So hopefully I'll get going on them. Um, haul is always gonna be fun to share. And again, thank you for joining me. Uh, that was a treat. And we made it through another one. And have a great weekend, you guys. Take care, keep well, and hang in there.